What's up you guys, Devin here coming at you with another video. Today we're in the park and there's a ton of birds, so excuse the background noise if it's really bad. It's also really hot and I'm refusing to take my beanie off, so I'm gonna start sweating at some point in this video, I'm sure. Today we're gonna be talking about color profile, specifically in the Lumix S cameras. Um, this can kind of work also for the Micro Four Thirds, though the colors are gonna be a bit different because of the different sensors. I know there's a lot of people asking online, hey, I've just got this Lumix camera and I'm wondering what profile should I shoot in when recording video. There's several color profiles in this camera. I end up using about four of them and I don't really mess with any of the other ones. The four we're gonna be going over in this video and I'll kind of tell you the use cases of why I use them and why I've made the choices I've made is natural, Cine D, HLG, and Vlog. Oh, the cicadas just started up. These are basically the four color profiles I use. I can pretty much get all of my work done with all of these, depending on if it's hyper professional and I need the best latitude in my footage that I could possibly get, or if it's something I wanna get out real quick, or footage I wanna hand over, and I don't wanna hand over footage that someone has to do a lot of work on. The first color profile I'm going to recommend you go to if you're just starting out is natural. The natural profile, in my opinion, has some of the best skin tones and some of the best just color overall um, out of the default profiles, out of the profiles you don't need to put any work into. This profile is really, really good if you're just starting out because it requires no work at all. If you're someone who's shooting in the 8-bit profiles or if you have an S1R and you have to shoot in the 8-bit profiles, this is a pretty good one to use. Mostly because you have to do nothing in post to it. It's just, it is what it is. It will blow out some of your highlights a little bit. It might crush some of your shadows in certain situations. But overall, you have to do nothing out of camera. Now, the cool thing is, if you have an S1, S1H, or S5, and you're able to shoot 10-bit, you can actually shoot 10-bit in the natural profile, and you still get a good bit of latitude, so if you want to do a light artistic color grade on top, you can do that pretty easily without really ruining the integrity of your footage. Natural is also the profile where the autofocus is gonna work the best in. Natural is the most contrasty of all the profiles I'm kind of gonna talk about today, and as you know, the Lumix system uses contrast autofocus, so the more contrast you have in your picture, the better the autofocus is going to work. I'm going to roll a couple of pieces of footage I took today with the natural profile and you can kind of see it. I'll also do some at the end where I kind of like put a light grade on them just so you could see that you can actually have a little bit of artistic color put into this if you decide to. Um, this may be a little harder to do if you're shooting the 8-bit codec, but if you're shooting 10-bit it holds up really, really well. Areas where I tell you to use the natural profile would be if you're just doing something like maybe you're making like home movies and you're going to hand it over to your family right after or you're doing something that's really really budget and you don't want to spend a bunch of time in post or if you're going to be handing over the footage to someone like let's say a company hires you to shoot them footage you typically unless it's a film company you don't want to really be handing your client log footage because then you're leaving all the people who work in their just marketing department to figure out like oh how do I color grade this and you know color grading can get really complicated and really complex and you really don't want to leave your clients who don't understand how to color grade uncolor graded footage. So when these cases arise, which they don't happen very often, but when they do, I'll typically shoot natural and just hand over the footage there. It's footage they can just use if they want to hire an editing company or come back to me later to have it edited, or if they just want to archive it for later purposes and they just want to have footage they took on hand, this is usually what I'll hand them. Moving on to the next color profile I recommend people using, and that is Cine Like D. Cine Like D is an interesting profile because it's not quite as desaturated as something like Log would be, but it really doesn't have much to it at all. It is a very washed out picture. This will actually maintain a little bit more in the highlights than something like Natural will, but not completely as much as something like Log will. It's kind of a cool middle ground. This is great if you're starting to learn a little more about color grading and you want to put a little more work, but you don't want to start from a completely like kind of like gray washed out image. If you have a project where you want to save a little bit of time, but you still want a good bit of latitude, this is a great profile to use. The skin tones look nice. The greens look nice. All the colors look really, really solid. Your highlight definition is retained, which is kind of like the most important thing. If I'm in a situation where I have like lots of clouds, I'd like to preserve some more of my highlights, but at the same time, I don't want to put all the work in that I have to do with log. Cine Like D is kind of a great middle ground to go with. I recommend this color profile if you're someone who wants a little more flexibility and you want to start coloring a little bit more, but you don't want the full responsibility of having to bring log completely to life. It's also great if you're going to be shooting 8-bit files because this colors a little bit for you in the camera, so you won't have to necessarily push 
the footage around as much. Also, Cine Light D works pretty well with autofocus as well because it is pretty contrasty while not being as contrasty as natural, still contrasty enough that it gives the autofocus like a lot to work with. This is a profile I've used on some professional shoots if I knew I was gonna have some gimbal shots and I wanted some more reliable autofocus, that way I didn't have to do the scene maybe too many times, I use Cine Light D, it's, it's really solid. I'll show you a couple of clips of what it looks like out of camera and then a couple of clips of it graded a little bit. Moving on to the next profile, and this is gonna be something you S1R users aren't gonna be able to really use, so just ignore this part, but that is V-Log. V-Log is what we're going to use if we want the maximum amount of latitude in our image. This is something where we could shoot like a bright sunny day and they have crazy amounts of clouds in the sky and we wanna see all the detail in those clouds. We can use this to see all the detail in the highlights and the shadows. One of the beautiful things about the S-Series is while they are great hybrid cameras, cameras and they give you that run and gun feel. They have things like log that really start giving you more of like a cinema quality feel of your camera where you, you're, the 10 bit V-Log file is just really nice and really great to work with. You get really nice dynamic range in it. Now you start losing autofocus capability, log is not great for autofocus. It can work if you have enough light, but it will lose you more than the other profiles I've mentioned. However, the colors you get out of log once you start putting your grade on it are really, really beautiful. It's one of my favorite color profiles in any camera ever. And yeah, there's really not much else to say about it. Log is basically if you wanna be able to have the most amount of color and highlight flexibility in your image. But it does take a little bit of practice working with log, but if you're ready to take that next level, Level, if you have an S1, an S5, or an S1H, you have that capability in your camera and the footage you can get out of it is just beautiful. And I'll show some of that now before I move on to the final color profile. The last color profile is available across the whole line. We won't exclude the S1R users this time. And that is HLG, which stands for Hybrid Log Gamma. This is my least used color profile out of all of the ones I've mentioned, though I do use it in certain situations. Those situations being, if I'm shooting something entirely in V-Log and I know I'm going to be doing like heavy, heavy low light work, I do like the way the HLG looks when it comes to the shadows. I do find with V-Log, you can get a lot of noise in the shadows, and this is something you can repair in post, though you will have to use like some heavy software, such as like Neat Video or something like that, and noise reduction software in video editing programs is really, really heavy and really slows down your computer. And if I know I'm gonna be running into that issue, for example, like a wedding, I'll be shooting the whole wedding in V-Log, but then once we get to the night and we get to like the dance floor, because that's all kind of like one scene that's happening, I'll then switch to HLG. HLG does match with log very, very well, I find, and I just like that it denoises the shadows and keeps the shadows a little cleaner. Also, after log, HLG does maintain the most in the highlights and the shadows. It may not look like it in camera, but once you put an HDR editing tool on the footage in post, you actually can recover a good bit from the highlights and the shadows as well. I'll show some footage of HLG now, as well as some additional shots kind of showing you what log looks like in the shadows and HLG looks like in the shadows so you can kind of see what I'm talking about.
You guys tell me what you thought of the footage down below. I'd like to mention too, if you're someone shooting photo, when it comes to these color profiles, it really doesn't matter if you're shooting raw. If you're shooting raw photos, it's going to look the same in all of them. Stay away from HLG and Vlog though, because I've noticed for some reason, even though you have your camera set to shoot raw, whenever you take pictures with Vlog or HLG as your color profile, it does tend to super darken them and then you have to bring them back. And I've still gotten all my images to look pretty good, but it's like an extra step and it does seem to cause a little bit of problems. However, if you're shooting JPEG because you don't want to mess with your images in post as much, um, this video kind of still stands. I'd probably shoot in natural and maybe decent like if you wanted to tweak the images a little bit, but probably I'd just use the natural profile if you were shooting JPEG. But that's gonna be it for this video. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you have a favorite profile and why you like it. Hit the like and subscribe button. I'd like to do a little more like talks like this, maybe about little intricacies of the camera for like beginners if you're just getting the camera or you just haven't explored certain aspects of your camera if you've had it for a while. Seems like it'd be something like pretty fun to do. Um, anyway, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.